Great. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, we'll give another about 30 seconds and then um, we'll get started. And all the lines are muted. So um, for any Q&A or um, comments, just leave it in the Q&A, which is in the bottom right hand um, under more panels. You'll see the Q&A there to submit any questions or comments. And we'll be monitoring it throughout. All right, well, let's get started. Um, thank you again for joining. I hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. Um, my name is Danielle Malamut, and I'm here with my teammate, Mike Murphy. And today we are going to start off uh, the Tech Tuesday demo days with IBM Cloud Satellite. So first we're going to um, discuss what IBM Cloud Satellite is, and then uh, we'll do some use cases and Mike will uh, do a demo, and then we'll conclude with a quick quiz, and um, the winner will get some special IBM merch sent to them. So I wanted to start with this box here on the left. It's a great summary of IBM Cloud Satellite and how we can guide specific clients to being successful um, if IBM Cloud Satellite is a good fit for them. So to start off, IBM Cloud Satellite is truly a hybrid multi-cloud platform. It's uh, a cloud anywhere as a service model. It's a distributed cloud, so wherever infrastructure is available um, and while it's managed from a common control plane. Starting at the top of the box, we see private, public, hybrid, and multi-cloud. IBM Cloud Satellite is compatible with hosting your infrastructure any of these ways. And yes, because it's a hybrid and multi-cloud, um, you can still use other cloud vendors such as AWS, Azure, Google, whatever your preference is. Next to the front of the box, IBM Cloud Satellite is a single console to manage locations globally while maintaining data sovereignty and compliance. IBM Cloud Satellite is industry um, optimized, controls strong enough uh, data for banks and regulated industries, and the IBM Cloud Satellite makes edge computing possible. Um, I'm gonna go into more detail about those three once we dive into the use cases. And then lastly, on the side of the box, IBM Cloud Satellite follows three pillars. First is enterprise grade. IBM Cloud Satellite offers 99.9% .9 SLAs to include client's own infrastructure, and no other distributed cloud provider offers this. Next is security leadership. Our IBM Cloud HyperProtect crypto services allows you to take control of your cloud data encryption keys and hardware security modules, and it's the only cloud service in the industry that's built on FIPS 142 level four certified hardware. And lastly, IBM Cloud Satellite is an open hybrid distributed cloud. Um, build your environment once, deploy it anywhere, and there's no vendor lock-in. So shifting to the right, I wanna dive into three main use cases we've seen our clients using, uh, using for satellite. Um, first is going to be edge for regulated workloads, and then we'll do edge and multi-cloud, and then we'll give you some on-premise examples. So first is edge for regulated workloads. Um, regulated workloads are a growing market, and there's hundreds of use cases that span every industry. So this one shows um, a need for data privacy. A German hospital network uh, needed to eliminate unsecure um, chat over personal devices with applications just like WhatsApp, which I'm sure many of us have used. It's an international one to communicate. Um, 
and these do not meet local regulations or confidential information on uh, this German hospital's application sticky notes. Um, their staff would use and they often physically share with their colleagues. They worked with IBM Global Business Services for a set of privacy aware business applications for chat. Um, vaccination records and appointment settings that they then deployed at their central university based hospital. Um, hundreds of smaller remote hospitals and clinics will run the same application once the vendor expands their footprint through IBM cloud satellite. And although their local hospital um, information technology teams have no Red Hat OpenShift skills, they can still manage the IT infrastructure like their firewalls, storage, network, and then the GBS team, um, they have the applications that are easily deployed and they are already developed and containerized. So with the promotion by the German Health Ministry, this solution can be replicated to other university um, hubs and hospitals. Sorry, um, and, with, and with IBM Cloud Satellite, um, clients do not need to increase their compliance risk because they can eliminate unsecure communication over personal devices. Um, they could speed up collaboration across hospitals, clinics, and pharmacies for improved patient care, and easily deploy containerized um, appointments and vaccination records across regional hospitals. So IBM Cloud Satellite offers a single console to manage hundreds of sites um, while maintaining data sovereignty and compliance. So next is Edge and Multi-Cloud, a United States-based multinational automobile manufacturer wants to leverage Maximo Visual Inspection at 25 manufacturing plants across the globe to address quality assurance in an automated way. Maximo Visual Inspection operates off of a machine learning model to detect safety uh, violations and manufacturing defects on the manufacturing floor and anytime there's a detection, the plant is shut down, which impacts production. Errors in the machine learning model are extremely costly and false positives and false negatives potentially shut down the production line. Because of this, models need to be continuously trained to improve accuracy. So in collaboration with IBM Research, we're working on a solution to update the machine learning model on the client's cloud provider shipping it down to the edge location to talk to Maximo Visual Inspection. The goal of this is to continuously improve the detection rate, reducing the number of plant shutdowns from false alerts. IBM Cloud Satellite will allow for the machine learning model to be deployed consistently across this edge and cloud environment. And because satellite is managed as a service, the client is able to lead the operations to IBM. And the last use case is on-premise. A Middle East-based uh, infrastructure firm needed to bring cloud capabilities to their clients in Saudi Arabia to drive innovation while keeping the data in country. They're investing millions to build a set of multi-zone regions like data centers for cloud providers to uh, park services within the Middle East. So the challenge is to accelerate technology innovation in Saudi Arabia, and a key component of this is the Saudi Vision 2030, which is a strategic framework to reduce Saudi Arabia's dependency on oil, uh, diversify its economy, and develop public service sectors. The public sector in particular can op uh, often be slow to innovation due to risk aversion, regulatory um, issues, and funding. So because of local data requirements, fully migrating workloads to public cloud is not an option, so they adopted IBM Cloud Satellite to bring public cloud to their clients. So this will allow them to comply with data regulations while being a catalyst for digital, uh, digitalization and innovation to support their vision of 2030. So I wanted to share a client's experience using IBM Cloud Satellite. Equinix is one of the world's largest infrastructure companies. Um, Equinix and IBM are collaborating to help customers and partners integrate multiple cloud solutions in a hybrid environment 
uh, solve digital transformation challenges, automate time-consuming work, and simplify collaboration. Together, Equinix and IBM are working to make it easier for their joint customers to access IBM cloud services and their digital infrastructure on platform Equinix worldwide through direct and secure interconnection of hybrid IT infrastructure. IBM Cloud Satellite can be deployed to 230 Equinix data centers um, across 64 metros with Equinix Fabric, helping enterprises connect to IBM Cloud from their physical or digital infrastructures. Equinix Fabric is a software defined interconnection designed for companies to connect to IBM Cloud. Um, Equinix and IBM are working to help enterprises accelerate their hybrid cloud journeys. Equinix Metal is now certified to run IBM and Red Hat applications with an initial focus on Red Hat OpenShift delivered through IBM Cloud Satellite. So a driving force behind the collaboration on hybrid multi-cloud um, is the shift we're seeing from a cloud-only deployment to hybrid and multi-cloud. So this uh, chart here from the Equinix 2020 to 2021 Global Tech Trends Survey reported that hybrid cloud adoption has increased by 12%, while multi-cloud models have increased uh, by 11%, compared to similar declines for just a public and private cloud. 46% of enterprises are using a hybrid cloud model, and um, 26 are now using a multi-cloud model. IBM Cloud Satellite on Equinix Metal expands the existing IBM delivery options with an on-demand bare metal as a service that's distributed globally. So when deploying and running Kubernetes workloads, businesses can use the combination of Equinix Fabric, Equinix Metal, and, Net and Network Edge uh, virtual services on platform um, Equinix to help create an interconnected digital infrastructure. So what is IBM Cloud Satellite? Many companies use multiple clouds, both private and public. Managing multiple clouds uh, can be very costly and it's extremely complex. Many applications also require low latency or have security restrictions and need to be available locally. Clients want to be able to run workloads where they can get the best performance and the lowest cost. IBM Cloud Satellite extends consistent IBM Cloud services to where a client needs them, which is on-premise, at the edge, or other cloud providers, just like we just talked about. IBM Cloud services are delivered as a service from a single pane of glass, reducing both complexity and cost. So now I'm gonna hand it over uh, to Mike Murphy. Take it away, Mike. Danielle, thanks. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us today. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, what I want to do now is before we get into the demo is spend, you know, five, six minutes and really talk about the nuts and bolts of cloud satellite, what the core components are. Um, so you have a better understanding of, of what it is that's doing all this work in the distributed cloud fashion. So the first thing I want to talk about is the actual satellite location. And uh, Danielle, you can go to the next slide. So satellite locations, what are they exactly? So a satellite location is, is any group of IaaS uh, that a customer wants to manage as a satellite location. It could be existing infrastructure on premise, it could be uh, virtual machines, could be bare metal machines, um, or, or it could actually be uh, infrastructure as a service sitting in other cloud service providers like Google, Azure, AWS, Alibaba, um, or it can actually be a physical appliance that is offered as a managed service through Kendrel. It's important to note uh, as, as well that IBM Cloud Satellite is the only distributed cloud offering that will integrate with all three of the major cloud service providers. And aside from Azure, it is the only one that can take advantage of existing infrastructure on premise. So a satellite location is instantiated by attaching the infrastructure, which are hosts that are running uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 or the latest uh, core OS uh, version to a satellite location that is created in an IBM account through the console or through the command line. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. 
um, requirements aside from running uh, rail 7 or core OS or that there must be 3 zones that are physically separate to spread out the host for high availability. So we're talking about 3 different zones in the same region. If you're running this on the cloud, or if you're running this on prem, you're going to, you're going to be running 3 different racks. So, how do you do it? It's creating location. Uh, you want to do this nearest the data source where the control plane will sit. So, if you've got data sitting in AWS, you would create a satellite location in the AWS availability zone to bring the IBM cloud to that data source. Same thing with edge computing and Danielle just mentioned. Uh, say, for example, you've got some cameras in a facility monitoring workplace safety and the data needs to be collected and analyzed at the source for quick remediation. You could run IBM cloud satellite on prem. So the customer is responsible for provisioning and starting up the given infrastructure. Then IBM is going to provide a small post provisioning script to get those hosts attached to a specific satellite location. Once they're attached, you would then need to assign the host to run the workloads. So if you want to deploy a satellite location to another cloud service provider like AWS, which I've done in this demo, IBM automates this process using schematics and Terraform scripts to provision hosts and deploy, configure, and register the location with IBM Cloud Satellite. So the next thing I want to talk about real quickly is the link component. And the link component runs in your control plane and is the main gateway for any communication between your satellite location and IBM Cloud. If your satellite location cannot communicate with the IBM Cloud multi-zone region anymore, your existing location workloads will continue to run, but you cannot make any configuration changes or roll out updates to the services and apps that run your location. Um, that said, as Danielle mentioned, IBM Cloud Satellite is the only distributed cloud offering amongst the major cloud service providers that offers a service level agreement uh, to include the client's own infrastructure. So with satellite link endpoints, you can allow any client that runs in your satellite location to connect to a service, a server, or application that runs outside of the location. And to establish that location, you must specify the destination resources fully qualified domain name, which is the FQDN or IP address, the port, the connection protocol, so it could be TCP, TLS, HTTP, HTTPS, and any authentication methods in the endpoint. The endpoint is registered with the satellite link component of your location satellite control plane, and then you've got a secure connection. So to help maintain uh, enterprise security and audit compliance, satellite link provides additional built-in controls to restrict client access to endpoints and to log and audit traffic that flows over the endpoints. So last but certainly not least, uh, we're going to talk about config, and config is really uh, going to be the showcase of the demo. Um, config is a, a continuous delivery tool based on the open source project Razi uh, that you can use to consistently roll out versions of your apps across clusters in your satellite locations. In other words, you create a configuration to specify what Kubernetes resources, which are just YAML file versions, that you want to deploy to a group of ROCKS clusters that are running in your satellite location or in the IBM cloud. So the, the ID and utility of satellite config is for ease of day two operations and a purview into all of your clusters in IBM Cloud and your satellite locations. You can also import non IBM clusters into config for management. It's very user friendly. You can see um, and gain insight into what applications and versions are running in your clusters. You can create cluster groups uh, for rollouts at scale, and it gives you a single pane of glass in the IBM console for visibility of your workloads. So a few of the, the major components of config are version, which just represents a YAML file that you upload or create for config. Subscription, which uh, we'll be showcasing here momentarily. Um, satellite subscription is created for um, a satellite configuration and specifies which version of the Kubernetes resource that you uploaded is deployed to which cluster groups. And then routes are used to define communication paths between the end user and the front end, as well as the front end to the back end and the back end to various back end data stores. So uh, next slide, please. This is just a high level um, architecture of the um, application that I've got deployed. Um, we're we're going to be running a food delivery application. It's a cloud native uh, microservices based application that leverages multiple cloud native open source projects um, to develop a simulated version of uh, Uber Eats um, or Grubhub type business. 
The application uses Kafka, which is an event store and streaming platform, a Redis database, in addition to a Mongo database. And I've got a um, satellite location deployed in AWS, where I've spun up a rocks cluster um, with that application running on top of rocks. And that's going to be my dev test site. And then I have a production environment that is running on a rocks cluster that is an IBM cloud. So this photo here, you can see on the left side, we've got um, there's a Washington DC <clears throat> uh, region that we've got, and we're running a rocks cluster with our food delivery application on tap on top of that for our production. We've got our satellite link in the middle. And then on the right side, we've got our satellite control plane with the hosts that are attached to that. On top of that, we're running our rocks cluster. And on top of the rocks cluster is where our food delivery application resides. So give me one second here and let me share my screen. We'll get into a quick little demo. All right, so I've got three different screens up and I'm gonna be navigating between the three of them. Uh, so to get to satellite, the first thing we do is just log on to the IBM cloud. Satellite's gonna be down here, this um, uh, hexagon looking shape. Um, so to create a satellite location, we're not gonna get into that. It's, it's fairly simple, but to do that, we would just go to locations, create a satellite location. This is gonna give us our options. Uh, something on premise or at the edge, AWS, Azure, GCP, and then down here would be the option if we wanted to do the physical appliance route uh, that's managed through Kendrill. So if I were to do something in AWS, all this is done through the IBM Cloud Console, I would enter in my access key ID and my secret key um, for AWS, and then it's actually going to bring up my AWS, AWS account and it will allow me to provision my EC2 instances uh, for my hosts. So let me go back to the templates and go down here to satellite. And to show you real quick, let me pull up the uh, command line. Uh, I need to log in again. That always happens. So this brings up just through the command line, I can show you this through the console as well, that you can do either or, whichever one suits your fancy. Uh, the satellite location that I'm gonna be playing around with is this YL-13-AWS down here at the bottom. And if I wanted to get more information about that, just type in this ID, and it's actually going to provide me with more information about this particular satellite location to include, give me one second. Uh, it's not working for me right now. So let me get out of this and then we go back to this. Um, and then I can show you the, the actual locations that I have. It's just a token that I need to refresh. So this is the actual location that I've got deployed, name, ID, um, satellite. Uh, it is uh, currently in an active state, regular, uh, ready for deployment. Um, number of hosts available, and then total number of hosts, and then the different zones that I've got this deployed in, 2A, 2B, and 2C. Infrastructure provider is AWS. So let me get out of this window real quick, and then I'm going to go to my OpenShift clusters that I've got both deployed on AWS via satellite, 
and on the IBM cloud. These are my two clusters that I'm going to pull up in the other other windows. Um, this one is in AWS via satellite. The second one here. Let me click on that. This is my production workload that I've got in Washington DC that's running my production environment. So I want to go to these clusters and show you this application. This is the um, rocks cluster. Um, homepage and to open the web shift console open shift web console. I would just select on that and it is actually going to pull up this page right here. And this is my food delivery application. I've got my various back end services, my Mongo database, my Redis database, and then I've got my front end, um, the courier, the kitchen orders coming in. And when I deploy this application, I've already got it deployed, but I'll just click on that. It actually brings up my Grubhub slash Uber Eats type uh, application and down here at the bottom, I can manipulate the rate of orders coming in, the speed of the couriers, the speed of the kitchens, and then it's going to um, output how these orders are fulfilled and how quickly they are. Uh, so I'll just start that real quick. Orders will start coming in depending on the speed of the kitchen and then the speed of the courier will determine how quickly and efficiently uh, those orders can be fulfilled. So here in a few seconds, you'll see uh, the fulfillment bar start going up. Um, let's take another second or two and then you'll start seeing some orders fulfilled. There we go. That's not what I want to showcase on this app though. Um, what I want to showcase is the fact that this is running in AWS via satellite and as we all know, applications change on a regular basis. Um, you know, oftentimes, many times, you know, a, a day or throughout the week. And uh, what I want to do now is using IBM Satellite Config is I want to change the appearance of this this application. Say that uh, this looks a little plain Jane for me, um, not too happy with the white background, and I want to uh, do something differently. So I'm actually going to go into um, back into Satellite. Go down to configs. Do this bigger screen so you can see it. I'm going to go down to my namespace that I've created. And then I talked about subscription earlier. You know, a sub subscription is created for satellite config and specifies which version of the Kubernetes resource that you uploaded and deployed to which cluster group. So um, we just saw the front end on the development clusters, which was white. It's currently running uh, version one. I want to change that to version two, which is going to have a slightly different appearance. So all I do is go into subscription, edit my subscription. I'm going to change the version, which is just a simple YAML file. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go back to my application that's in AWS. I'm going to give it a moment. And then I'm going to refresh it and you can notice the background is a, a dark green. Uh, at least that's what it looks like on my screen. Dark, dark blue, dark green. Um, so that's that's as easy as it works. You know, I've, I've got again. I'm managing this uh, rocks deployment in AWS via cloud satellite and all this is done through the IBM cloud console. Uh, you can also do it through the um, uh, command line interface as well. So what I want to do now is now that uh, all my boxes are checked for my deployment uh, and, and development, I want to go back and change that for my production environment, which is running in IBM Cloud. There's my rocks cluster, get some info on that. There's my application in WDC. I'm going to launch that. Note that I haven't rolled out that change from version two for the front end from uh, development into production just yet. So that's what I want to do now. I want to show you that it's still running version one. What I'm going to do is simply just go back to my console, go to my subscriptions, edit front end on production clusters, and I want to change that to version two since all the boxes were checked for successful deployment to development. And we'll give that a moment. And we'll 
refresh and it's going to take another second or two. And we'll take another one. And there you go. So as you can see, uh, successful deployment to development, followed by uh, changing the subscription to roll that out to production. And then if I wanted to do a rollback, if I didn't like this for whatever reason, or it was giving me some errors, I would simply go back to my subscriptions in the IBM console, edit my subscription, change my front end back to version one, quick save, that's gonna roll out 10, 15 seconds later. I'm, I'm gonna be able to perform a rollback for my development application that's running in Washington, DC. And it always takes a little bit longer. And there we go. So I hope this demo uh, just really showcases the, um, uh, just how powerful um, IBM Cloud Satellite is. You know, we're talking about a simple application uh, that I've got running, one that's in AWS in Washington, DC, uh, which is my development. And then again, my production environment that's running in um, IBM's cloud, and it's connected via satellite securely. And um, that's the demo that we wanted to showcase um, uh, today, just to show you how easily uh, you, you can manipulate your clusters. You've got a single pane of glass that you can see all your rocks clusters that are deployed, uh, both in the IBM cloud and on satellite. And um, I hope everybody found this useful. Danielle, back to you. Great. Thanks, Mike. So now I am going to um, share my screen and we will start up the Kahoot quiz. And Timothy, I, I just saw your question. And yes, we do have a recording. So um, we will be sending the recording out to everyone. And again, um, there will be prizes at the end. So um, don't hold back. If you haven't played Kahoot, um, you can either scan the QR code or um, just uh, join the Kahoot.it um, URL and enter this game code and I'll give everyone a minute or two just to um, log in and we'll see everyone join as everyone logs in. For those of uh, you attending as well, I'm also going to put the demo that I just did. Um, it's in IBM Tech Zone. I'm going to put that link in the chat. Uh, business partners or IBMers can access that. It's it's a really fun um, demo to, to showcase the value prop of satellite running in AWS. Um, takes a few hours to set up, but um, it's it's a good one. So I'm going to pop that in chat for those that are interested in, in using this at a later date. And again, for um, the person that wins the Kahoot, if you um, could just drop your email in the, the chat, or if you prefer to email it directly, um, Mike and I will put our emails in the chat also just to send us, um, so we can get in touch with you to get your address to send you the prizes. So if Tim, Timothy, or Kurt, or David are visitors, non-IBMers today, aren't in the Kahoot quiz yet, please just a gentle reminder, join via the link that's in the chat. We look forward to seeing you there.
All right, we'll give another minute and then we'll get started. All right, let's get started. All right, first question coming up. IBM Cloud Satellite allows you to consume IBM Cloud services on premise, at the edge, other public clouds, or all of the above. There is about 10 seconds remaining. All of the above, great answers, everybody. All right, clubbers in first place by hitting that button first. <laughs> All right, question number two, which of the following is not a use case for IBM Cloud Satellite? We've got about eight seconds. And uh, Edge and Virtual uh, Private Cloud, that is the correct answer. It is not a use case for IBM Cloud Satellite. All right, different leaderboard now, let's keep going. What cloud service provider cannot host an IBM Cloud Satellite location? We've got about five seconds remaining. And none of the above is the correct answer. All right, and the last question we got here. What two operating systems do satellite hosts require today? So this is two answers, not just one. Just keep that in mind. And we've got about 15 seconds. All right. Great job, everyone. Let's see the winners. And first place, Timothy, congrats. Be joining late and you still won. <laughs> Awesome, awesome job to everyone. Thank you for participating. Um, we will get your email, Timothy, so that we can uh, send you some awesome prizes. And we have everyone's email addresses also, so we'll send out the recording. Um, and we appreciate everybody joining today. Um, we're gonna stay on for a couple more minutes. If everyone, uh, if anyone has questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A for us.
And actually, Danielle, Martin has a quick announcement there if you just wanted to read that for our business partners in the chat. Great. Yeah, thanks for putting that in there, Martin. Um, so for partner architects and sales engineers, um, Martin said that they're hosting a three and a half day deep dive uh, technical session in Raleigh um, in August around IBM Cloud Satellite. So if you uh, are interested, uh, Martin dropped his email on there. So that would be a great opportunity to get pretty hands on with us too. Yeah, so the, uh, this is Martin, welcome everyone. Um, yes, we're offering a three and a half day deep dive. Um, and if interested, we've got two sessions, so the two weeks in in August, and August 15 through the 18, and August 29th through September 1st. So um, if interested, just shoot me an email, and um, I can get you more details on that. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. All right, everyone, well, we appreciate um, you all joining today and we're gonna uh, close out the call. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to send Mike or I an email. I think there are questions on the chat. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Oh, Timothy had a question. Is it possible for business partners to deploy uh, satellite in a no cost discounted development environment? Maybe I'll answer that one. So, uh, through our normal channel strategies, Tim, uh, I don't know if you work with Tech Data, Arrow, or Ingram. I'd have to check. Uh, but uh, by nature of the distribution mechanism, there are um, th those three VADs can offer you some level of discount so that you can make some the margins there. Um, and then depending on if it's a proof of concept, uh, even if we have customers on, this is okay. Uh, we, we can do a proof of concept type of environment, uh, with a, a full setup of requirements. So if we've got a good understanding of what the requirements are, uh, to win the proof of concept, that's something that can be set up specifically for a particular opportunity. If it's just for learning purposes. Here again, I'll go back to our VADs, uh, the Tech Data, uh, TD Cynix, Arrow, or Ingram Micro. Uh, they have funding to available for you to do some learning uh, in uh, an environment that uh, encompasses IBM Cloud and Satellite. Thanks, Roger. Thanks for catching that question, Felix. Any other questions? All right then, Danielle, I'll close it out for us then. And I'll yeah, save all of our great. questions and everything. So thank you guys. Awesome, yeah, thank you everyone for joining and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks everyone. Very well.